Woke represents a war on truth, so we pledge to wage a war on woke. We will fight the woke in education, we will fight the woke in the corporations, and we will fight the woke in the halls of Congress. We will never ever surrender to the woke mob. The woke mind virus, woke. Woke, the woke, woke, woke mob. Woke ideology. We fought the woke, the woke, 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 woke mob. Woke, 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 woke. We will never ever surrender to the woke mob. Well, it seems like woke has officially run its course. I, for one, have been sick and tired of hearing about woke bullshit for a very long time now, but apparently I'm no longer alone because even Republican Party primary voters don't actually care if Republicans vow to take on quote unquote woke corporations or not, because as Politico reports, more than half of GOP primary voters said in a New York Times Siena College poll last month that they were more likely to support a candidate who says that the government should stay out of deciding what corporations can support over one who promises to fight corporations that promote woke left ideology. Likewise, fewer than half of GOP primary voters said in a June morning consult poll that companies are doing too much to promote social equality and acceptance in the United States. New polling from the Cap Action Fund, an organization affiliated with the Liberal Center for American Progress think tank, found a majority of voters, including a majority of Republicans, support corporations being environmentally and socially responsible, though there was more support for being environmentally responsible than socially responsible across all types of voters. And these results to me are not surprising, but it's no wonder why candidates like DeSantis who hyper fixate on woke stuff is going down in flames in the GOP 2024 primary, at least as of now, because I mean, voters simply just don't give a shit and they're not picking up what he's putting down. And as a result, he's been forced to relaunch his campaign. And I find it hilarious. Now, look, if I had to guess, I think that these voters, including Republicans, they never really cared in the first place. But all of them, after hearing about nonstop woke this, woke that for months, they're experiencing woke fatigue because politicians like DeSantis just refuse to shut the fuck up about woke shit. I mean, you're worse than the people that you're criticizing, right? Because people who are supposed to be woke social justice warriors slash politically correct people, these are individuals who are supposedly insufferable to Republican Party voters because they refuse to stop talking about these types of things. But I mean, if you're going to be the mirror image to that and just talk about it as much as the caricature that you've created of your opponents, then I mean, you're really no different, right? You're going to burn people out. And that's what's happening. And this has always been the case for Republicans. Because remember, even before woke, there was other stuff that they fixated on in 2021. It was CRT this and CRT that. And in 2022, it was cancel culture, cancel culture, cancel culture. Uh, Cat in the Hat is being canceled. Mr. Potato Head is being canceled. Now it's woke, 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 woke. And they just will not shut the fuck up about this goddamn word. And by relentlessly pushing this, they're demonstrating to voters that they're a one-trick pony, right? There's no real substance there. It's just the next thing to distract people. And the reason why Woke isn't hitting the way that they want it to is because nobody even knows what the fuck it means. Earlier this year, Vice News talked to CPAC attendees about Woke, and they asked people to define it. And as you're going to see, each person they talked to had a different definition of Woke. The Woke today are basically the ones who buy into the mainstream dominant narrative of that everything's a uh, identity oriented virtue signaling position to have a different position of power. That whole narrative, I, I mean, I, I think that's, people who genuinely believe that are basically brainwashed. Wokery is part of the Marxist agenda along with ESG, along with the you know, 1619 movement and, and BLM. What do you think woke means? I think that there's the, um, an attack on regular family values that have been consistently themed in this in the in the United States for hundreds of years. 
I'm a mom, and so for me, woke is probably a little bit different than just the the huge general population. I think more about my children and schools that they're in, and children are now coming home and thinking that they have to accept things that maybe we didn't teach in our family or in our home. So everything is it's just being disruptive. That's a problem for the GOP because message discipline is one thing. They're all simultaneously saying the same thing, which is woke bad. And Democrats don't usually do this. So that discipline there, politically speaking, is effective. But if they don't have a widely agreed upon definition for it, then it's not going to hit the same way like cancel culture, which is viscerally something that people can respond to and think, oh, wow, well, I don't want to be canceled, so I guess cancel culture bad. Whereas when it comes to woke, nobody really knows what that means. Or if they do have a definition of it, then they have their own definition for it. I mean, at this point in time, it's just the synonym for things that Republicans don't like. But at least those people that we saw in the video, uh, to their credit, were able to formulate some definition. Because remember, Bethany Mandel, a conservative thought leader who co-wrote a fucking book about woke, she froze when she was asked to describe it five months ago on The Hill Rising. Could, could, would you mind defining woke? Because it's come up a couple times and I just want to make sure we're on the same page. So, I mean, woke is sort of the idea that... Um, I... This is going to be one of those moments that goes viral. I mean, woke is something that's very hard to define, and we've spent an entire chapter defining it. It is sort of the understanding that we need to re -to totally reimagine and re re redo society in order to create hierarchies of oppression. Um, sorry, I... It's, it's hard to explain in a 15 second soundbite. Well, yeah, look, your it, time. that video still slaps five months later, honestly, still a banger. But I mean, you see the problem, right? There's no agreed upon definition by the right for this word. They stole it from black Americans. It's been co-opted and bastardized into oblivion to the point where it's lost all meaning. It's completely incoherent. But at the end of the day, the policies to address woke ideology are the same antiquated culture war policies that the GOP has always supported. It's just that woke is the new branding that they're choosing to use. And unfortunately for the GOP, voters now have an easily identifiable term to apply to policies that have proven to be a demonstrable failure. In Florida, for example, the anti-woke capital of the country, DeSantis has framed his attack on LGBTQ plus rights and the takeover in education as a war on woke. But those policies don't just harm the marginalized people who they target. It harms the state itself, and that is now demonstrated in the way that those policies are impacting the Florida economy. Because as the Sun Sentinel explains, Broward County tourism officials say that financial losses are continuing to mount as conventions, once scheduled for Fort Lauderdale, have opted to go someplace else. The tally now stands at 14, with four of those conventions backing out in August alone. According to Visit Lauderdale, the agency formerly known as the Greater Fort Lauderdale Convention and Visitors Bureau, they cite Florida's culture wars on issues that critics say attack blacks, gays, and transgender youth, as well as policies targeting state universities, as well as migrants. Broward's tourism arm said the lost conventions could have brought hotel stays to Fort Lauderdale and its surrounding cities, which also meant money spent on restaurants and attractions. In other words, DeSantis' war on woke is officially hurting Florida's economy. Because when you have civil rights organizations like Equality Florida and the NAACP issue travel advisories saying that marginalized groups aren't necessarily safe if they travel to Florida, well then, these organizations that hold conferences in Florida or might book something in Florida might not want to do that because they want all of their guests to feel welcome. And if they don't feel welcome, they're not going to hold the conference there. So the article talks about a number of organizations that have pulled out. So there's a couple of uh, examples here. There's the Tom Joyner Foundation that wanted 100, uh, excuse me, 1,700 hotel rooms for the convention. But guess what? They're no longer going to use a venue in the area, specifically citing fear for the safety of African-American attendees and LGBTQ plus people who have to travel to Florida for the event. Right. So if they lose money because these marginalized guests don't want to attend, 
Florida in turn loses money as well. There's also the Specialty Toy Retailing Association, which was planning a 3,000 person conference in Fort Lauderdale in 2026, but they've also pulled out citing an unfriendly political environment. There's also the Association for Research in Vision and Ophthalmology. They're not going to be hosting their annual convention in 2028, citing political issues specifically surrounding women's health. And on top of that, there's the National Sales Network Conference, and they've announced that they're also no longer holding conferences in the state after DeSantis supported the curriculum that teaches Florida students that there are benefits to slavery. This is all due to his war on woke. That's what happens when you wage a war on woke, right? You hurt the economy. Lots of jobs are going to be impacted by this. Lots of businesses aren't going to get those customers that stay there, restaurants, hotels. And it's all for what? To make marginalized people feel less safe? It's ridiculous. So from a policy standpoint, woke has been a failure. But from a political standpoint, from a branding standpoint, it's also now a failure. The polls reflect that. So when you look at the impact that this has had, it makes sense that Republican voters themselves have soured on the word woke and woke hysteria. Because while social conservatives might agree with these social policies, they're not willing to bear the economic cost for them. That's kind of what we're seeing. That's why I think they're turning on this branding. So in conclusion, I think that it's safe to say that conservatives have lost the war on woke. It's over, right? I'm sorry if you, uh, if you hate woke and you want to be an anti-woke person, it's just not that lucrative for you as a politician. Now, if you're a grifting YouTube right winger who wants to complain about, I don't know, the Barbie movie going woke, there's still money to be made there. But if you're a politician, it's just not a brand that is going to be conducive to political success for you. But understand that this isn't the end. Maybe DeSantis doesn't talk about woke bullshit as much, but in a year or so, the Republican Party is going to all come up with a new phrase that they fixate on and collectively push it until we're all sick and tired of it again. And then they'll come up with another phrase, so on and so forth, and this is how it's going to be in perpetuity, right? And the reason why they have to keep switching it up is because this is all that they've got. That's it. That's that's all they've got. They can't actually be open about the real policies that they support and their economic agenda. I mean, imagine if they were just honest and they're like, hey, we want tax cuts for the rich. That's not going to resonate with anyone. So they try to concoct distractions for their supporters in an effort to raise the salience of other things that don't necessarily affect them, but might entice them more than their economic policies. So that way they're able to get elected and then effectively serve the corporations that they're currently pretending to hate so much. I mean, this has always been the GOP's playbook, and that's not going to change anytime soon. So even if they lost the war on woke, they're going to wage a new war on something. Maybe they'll go back to political correctness or cancel culture, but either way, woke has run its course, and uh, the next big branding exercise is probably coming very soon. Mark my words. Woke mom. Woke test. Woke 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 Woke